Hey journeys, where y'all been? It's Unique and I'm back with another video. It has been a week or so since I last posted for y'all. Continuing on with our online social media series. If y'all have not been tapped into my previous videos, then definitely check the description box down below just so that you can be brought up to speed as to the trajectory of what it is that we have been speaking about on this series so far keeping in line with the series i wanted to come on and talk to you guys about the fear of perception and how it kept me stuck i have been through many phases of life where it's been so many changes around my work that it is that i do how it is that i show up on this youtube space my relationships my connections just overall me growing differently as a person through experience one of the things that has truly held me back in life is the fear of how it is that I am perceived by others. And we know that this comes from a mindset or a way of life that we call people pleasing, that you care a lot about what other people think of you and how other people will feel about the actions, the choices, and the decisions that you make for your life. Over time, being able to trust my intuition has definitely helped me a lot with ridding myself from the people pleasing narrative, but it took me a lot of experiences, a lot of failures to actually be able to get there. And I really want to share with you guys my story around how I was able to, one, acknowledge the fears that I had around how it was that I was perceived outside of myself to how I was able to heal through those perceptions and rewrite the story that I was once told by others. Three, how I was able to move forward from being a people pleaser to someone who wholeheartedly trust themselves for what it is that they wanted for themselves so if that is something that y'all can resonate with or something that you have been trying to overcome and triumph through then definitely stay tuned okay y'all so i know you're probably thinking like unique why is it that every time we come on here and talk about something you related back to being online and being in social media let me tell you Social media is like the battleground for being able to know thyself and learn thyself and really just come to terms with who the fuck it is that you are, who you want to be or who you're not going to be. And that's why I always bring it up as like this playing field of these topics and how it is that I'm navigating through life because I feel like the perceptions that we hold on our social media says a lot about us and where it is that we are and they really challenge like who is it that we're going to be how is it that we're really going to show the fuck up or not continuing on with this series around online presence and social media presence is very important to acknowledge because i feel like a lot of the ways in which i was able to like keep face or save face was through my social media so i know there's like this tendency for people whether you're trying to or not to only show the highlight reels of life and i was having a conversation with someone they had reservations around you know where it was that we were in our connection at that time and they didn't want it to feel like whenever i was going through something or whenever i experienced something it was like i'll go to social media about that as it relates to them and they were concerned around like how that would be perceived whether i was speaking about them directly or not and one thing that i had to mention was that like i share my life experiences through conversation and i use youtube and my podcast as a visual diary to really just sift through this thing that we call life and i know that for some people that's very uncomfortable people don't tend to use these spaces as an outlet in the same kind of way that i do and so it can ultimately lead them to be very reserved or very put off around doing it i had to really like come to terms with like who it is that I am and not take on like other people's projections around what does not feel comfortable for them. I think it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable, to be open about 
your wrongs, your flaws, the things about yourself where you may have fallen short, the mistakes that you have made in life and everything. And I also think that it takes a certain level of courage to talk through those things openly and publicly online while you're in the middle of it. I feel like since I've had this channel, it has been just one big coming of age story <laughs> to be honest and through the midst of that i have truly like showed myself in my age for y'all who don't know our frontal lobe doesn't fully develop until we're 25 years old and just to think i came on to youtube when i was 20. if you think of it in the grand scheme of it by the time i was 25 i would find myself being so hard on me and just really judging myself harshly about the positioning and the place that i was in life as it related to whether it was the relationship escalator or the societal escalator that says you go to school get good grades go to college once you graduate you get a good job you make good money and you take care of your family retire and die all of that to me it was just like okay i'm really really trying at this but it's really just not working out for me and i would find myself in jobs that i hated continuing to go to school even though i knew that like within my heart i couldn't do it no more i didn't have the mental capacity to do it anymore i didn't have the emotional capacity to do it anymore but because i had this people pleasing tendency that i wanted to prove something to these outside forces around how smart i was how intelligent i was feeling afraid to fail in a sense when people had already said that like i wouldn't be able to go through with it or i wouldn't be able to finish or being this beacon of bragging rights you get what i'm saying for my parents because they had this idea around what it was that i was supposed to do how it was that i was supposed to find success for myself and what it was that was going to ultimately help me to be in a position to at some point take care of them right and so I felt a lot of those pressures externally from my family, just to keep it a being like from the very, very start. And I think that like due to the fact that I was constantly trying to prove that I was good enough, just being a person who came from a background of having one parent who was drug addicted and then also having another person who had really low self-esteem and how like the low self-esteem was also put on me and how I kind of like took that on for myself and how it was that I seen myself just not really attracting the best energy once I got out of my four walls of the home that I grew up in and coming out into the world and really just walking through the world with so many insecurities and such a like low sense of self-worth because I didn't feel like I was good enough because my parents weren't together i didn't have this nuclear family and i just felt like i always had to do a little bit more and work a little bit harder and just continue to be like above average because one i'm a woman two i'm black and i'm just sitting here in this intersectionality of like really just trying to be the best of the best to these terms and these standards of like how it was written for some person out there that it worked for but internally feeling like this toil of like this is not for me and i wasted so much money you guys just off the fear of how i would be perceived i felt like i could buy people in my relationships i felt like i could apply for so many student loans just to finish and get this piece of paper to say like oh you have a bachelor's of arts looking back on my 20s and just seeing like how much money i wasted because i was just too afraid to say no and i'm y'all i'm gonna do like a follow-up about people pleasing saying no without explanation and all of that but because i couldn't say no i ended up saying yes to something that like literally put my life on hold and so being that like i continued to go to school when i didn't want to i continued to take out all these student loans when i knew that i should have just stopped after my sophomore year 
I accumulated so much debt and it's negatively impacting me like in this time in my life when I'm ready to start a family and I'm ready to build a legacy for myself and it's just like all of that stuff feels like it's on hold because I just irrationally just fill out paperwork and apply for things that I didn't really have a full understanding and knowing about and I wasn't really educated on the impact of what that means because there was this narrative given to me that like once you go to college you'll get a good job you'll make money you'll be able to pay it off but like that's not my reality I feel like that alone has been something that has held me back financially and has made me feel like very very stuck with money and another aspect of perception is there's this part of me that really desires to travel right and it really desires to be this girl of the world it desires to have this global reach and i think that's why i really enjoy having a youtube channel because i can like make a message and the message with the click of a button can be spread across the world and reach so many different people in so many different places something in my purpose something in my heart is like pulling and tugging me to like travel and to explore and connect with other cultures and connect with other people but due to my fears around like feeling as if that's irrational feeling like traveling all the time is something that's not attainable for me that is like a rich people thing or feeling like my want to travel will take me away from the cookie cutter lifestyle of the middle class of waking up going to a nine to five having dinner watching a show going to sleep waking up having a nine to five you might go to the gym having dinner going to sleep wake up having your nine to five you may do a hobby and have dinner go to sleep due to the fact that i'm trying to like uphold this idea of what middle class values have been presented to me to look like and what success has been presented to me to look like i feel like i would be perceived as somebody who um isn't like responsible or serious about life or has like a lack of security and stability for their self. If you're constantly traveling all the time, where do you live? Where is your home? Where is your home front? And I know that stuff can be created. A part of me is like, okay, let me get the security and the stability and like the brick and mortar type, like having a house and having my own spot. So like I can be seen as mature and responsible. And it's just like, I really don't even want to have a lease. I don't want to pay rent. I don't want to play this matrix game of property and having a house and upkeeping a house and all that stuff. I just want to do like month to month, six months here, a year there, seven months there, three months there and just travel and like go all these places and have like multiple homes and multiple places. But it's just like my fear of being seen as like immature for feeling like that way is making me like have you know the traditional like apartment there's also topics that i be wanting to present on this channel and i feel like the fear around perception is keeping me stuck in procrastination i procrastinate because i be wanting things to be perfect and i be wanting to fit like an aesthetic and I also feel like my thoughts have to be flushed and my thoughts have to be clear same thing with the podcast and also I don't want some of the things that like I have interest in some of the topics that I want to talk about I fear that they will offend my present audience or a audience that might come along I have been kind of tailoring my content to be in this safe area and I've really been wanting a space to express other topics, not to necessarily have people to agree with me, but be able to create a space where people can think a little bit outside of the box of their norm of what it is that they're used to. I have allowed my fear of my current audience not really resonating with that to keep me from posting that type of content and also keeping me from exploring those areas further and seeing how I can actually be active and being a voice for that but 
also an active participant whether in my local community and the online community some type of community dialogue space where we can create space to have those topics the journey free podcast it kind of brushes over those to a certain extent but it's not black and white i've noticed that due to the fact that i fear a lot around how people see me how people perceive me i hold back so much me holding back doesn't really allow me to be in my full potential and once i've overcome the outside perceptions around different areas of life i then have come into the space where i have to then address the voice that's in my head that's internal because in therapy i will always say they this they that they this they that my therapist would ask me who is they and i'm like you know people and she's like people like who and i'm like oh my family my friends my youtube audience and she'll be like but who said that directly? And I'm like, I don't know, but just people. No, it's the internal <laughs> perceptions as well. I actually wanted to talk to y'all about body dysmorphia today, but I'm gonna save that one for a follow-up too. So we're gonna follow up about people pleasing and being able to say no without explanation. And we're gonna also follow up about body dysmorphia so I can go a little deeper into the physical perceptions that I have of self that have contributed to me also being stuck. Just from me in general, using my voice, following my dreams, and not just dreaming, but putting action into what it is that I'm doing. And not feeling like I have to continue to put action into things that are cookie cutter and status quo. Just to live up to this facade of success, maturity, responsibility, and stability. If y'all have been in a space lately where y'all have been noticing that you're very very concerned about what it is that people think I really want you to challenge yourself like why is this important to me and also is the way that I'm living my life hurting anybody and is it ultimately what it is that I want for myself and if the way that you're living your life if that's not ultimately what you want for yourself, if it's something that you feel like has been put on you throughout the course of time or something that you have just fell into like a piece of tumbleweed because I'm going to tell y'all, I have literally felt like a tumbleweed through life because I've really not been living in my purpose. I'm not doing anything that truly, truly makes me happy. And there's aspects of my life that, yes, they go amazing they go great but it's not like the ultimateness of what i feel and see and believe for myself i feel like it's just this watered down version of me because i don't want to be too bold i don't want to be too out there i don't want to shake the table i don't want to shake the cage because it's just like i care too much about what people think and so how is it that we can overcome the fears that we have around perception? One of the first things that you can do to overcome the fear of perception is to honestly look in the mirror and tell yourself, like look dead into your eyes and say, I am happy with the way that I am, as I am, nothing more, nothing less. Once you've come to terms with that, it will start getting easier and easier over time. And you will be tested. Let me tell you, you will be tested. People will say little things. They will make little comments. They will share their opinions. But you have to consult with you first. And if you're a spiritual person, you have to connect with spirit around like, what is the plan for you? And being able to really fully live in that plan by taking actionable steps to be that just know that like fear can easily be shifted into like bravery it can be easily shifted into confidence you just have to allow it to be able to shift you can't like hold it back because you feel stuck you get what i'm saying you can't like hold on to things that don't serve you because you feel in a rut eventually you've got to get out the rut and eventually you're gonna have to really rework how it is that you see yourself and how it is that you take on how it is that others see you and knowing the difference knowing the difference around what's the perceptions that have been put on me throughout my lifetime and what is actually true 
what is it that I want to be true? Because we can create our truths each and every day. And so like knowing what it is that you want to be true and knowing what it is that is true to you without any other fuss, that's going to get you there. I'm in this process of really just trying to figure out how can I get unstuck? Because me being stuck, I feel like I have been wasting my life away. Yes, I vlog. Yes, I make it pretty. Y'all can check those videos out on my membership channel just to see like how my life has been on a day to day. You can listen to my podcast to see from a spirituality perspective, like right under the surface, that layer like in the depths. You can listen to the podcast to hear about that. But let me tell y'all, I have truly, truly been struggling with feeling stuck in life and not really knowing what to do with myself, not knowing who to be, not knowing should I quit today or tomorrow, not knowing should I go and work some other job or knowing whether I should just keep at it or say fuck it all and <laughs> create a job or product or something for myself all of this is swirling around being in the last year of my 20s it has definitely been that moment of like wow i'm creeping up on the end of my side on return have i matured have i did this and like really just being in a mental turmoil of life and really trying to find like that groundedness space because that's what my therapist says she's like girl you gotta get more grounded okay you gotta get more grounded than this i'm trying to be a little more grounded than this i still want to figure it out <laughs> i really want to be able to get out of this stuck space and i think that um, if I can really just come to terms with knowing what's true for me, knowing what it is that I really, really want for myself and being able to center in on that and being able to live through that fully, I'll be able to get myself unstuck and be able to move on and press on from this phase that I have been in in my life. So yeah, journeys, if anything that I said in this video resonated with y'all, leave me a comment in the comment section and tell me how this topic resonated with you if you heard something in your head that kind of came up for you as i was talking through this topic then definitely let me know you can check out my membership space by hitting the join button on my channel you can also come over and listen to my podcast at journey free podcast all the links will be in the description box down below in addition to my social media where you can connect with me further beyond this space don't let the fear of perception get you stuck thank y'all so much for taking the time to watch this video and until next time i will see y'all on my next one bye journeys you can do what you wanna live how you wanna spend what you wanna be who you wanna be the young stunner to the idea you can do what you wanna live how you wanna spend